So Huda, I'm going to actually start with you um, to just describe a little bit about the work that you're doing around criminal justice reform and um, kind of how, how the consortium that's come together to put you in place and what the goals are for what you are embarking on. So, you know, this partnership uh, between the three foundations, which is the Minneapolis Foundation, the Greater Twin Cities United Way, and the St. Paul and Minnesota Foundation had started this conversation last year, actually, um, but uh, the work had started, I believe, formalizing the project um, earlier this year, and then I was brought on board uh, June 1st to put together a plan uh, for a vision, uh, for the vision of, of, of the three foundations. And I, I guess I'd like to start by saying that, um, I, you know, our, our criminal justice system is not working well uh, for everybody, for, for the different communities that make up um, Minnesota. And it's policy, and the reason being that its policies are steeped in uh, historic racism and oppression, but then those policies, you know, while the racism might, may or may not be gone uh, and, and don't exist in the way that they used to hundreds of years ago, those policies still exist. And so those practices also exist, which leads to uh, community, you know, black and indigenous communities having, um, being overly burdened and overly taxed and, and uh, by, by the justice system. So what our role has been, what, what we're thinking about in this project is to advance uh, solutions, policy solutions, so that, um, actually I should say, advance policy solutions that are co-created and designed in partnership with impacted communities. Uh, and those policy solutions aim to dismantle uh, the systemic barriers that get in the way of having a justice system that works for everybody equally, no matter the color of their skin, um, and then their socioeconomic status or their background. So that's the that's the goal of the project. Uh, and I've spent the last uh, I should say my background is not in criminal justice. So Sheila, um, yeah, I appreciate what you just said. My background is not in criminal justice. I was trained in public health. The first three months of this this role, really learning the space, connecting with folks that are in the space, community leaders that are working in the space, system leaders that are, are thinking about reform or transformation, uh, and that are really plugged into the ins and outs of how the system works from the inside. And then based on those conversations, I've put together a plan that we're now oper operationalizing. And the first step of that plan is to assemble a community advisory team. And on that community advisory team, it's going to be about two thirds or predominantly made up of what we're calling justice impacted community members. And by that we mean um, community members who have been in the justice system uh, who, or who've had family members in the justice system or as, as, you know, as a defendant or as a victim. And the idea is that together then um, they, you know, they can provide a, they can, they can guide us in the work. And the way we're envisioning the work is, uh, once we have that uh, team assembled, is identifying what priority pain points the community wants us to focus our efforts on based on their experience. And then from there, really go into designing policy solutions and then funding the piloting of those solutions that are identified by community members and then scaling it um, as appropriate. I would also like to say, while we're you know, deeply partnering in this work is going to be led uh, by uh, justice impacted community members, uh, we're also you know, establishing partnership with and really working closely with system decision makers and system uh, implementers, because at the end of this, they're going to have to be part of the group that um, takes this work into action. So the earlier that we can have them at the table, uh, as long as they're in alignment with the value and intention of the work, we want to establish those partnerships and move forward with them and have people engaged early and often and have as many on ramps as possible. There's a sort of a pressing need in the community now to know how, how quickly are we going to figure out how to fix, fix things. So I want you to kind of speak a little bit about the sort of the timetable of what you are thinking of and um, 
what you're hoping to see over the next uh, long while of conversations. Yeah. So uh, a couple of things I want to point out with what you just said is there's a lot of momentum right now around policing and the focus of our work and the message that we want to get out there. It's the whole system <laughs> is broken, you know, before you get to policing. So the scope of our work right now and that we're hoping our community conversations will help us hone in on is broader than policing. It starts with disciplinary systems in schools because we've all, I think we've all seen the research about how children of color are disciplined more harshly than other, other children. So starting all the way from up there. So that's one, one thing. And then when you ask about the timeline, systems change takes time. It, it takes a while. I mean, we didn't get here overnight and there's not going to be a fix uh, overnight. And it's going to take a different kind of conversation to occur, which I think where we are right now in Minnesota, we may be ready for that. And when I say we may be ready, it doesn't mean that everybody's on board and everybody wants to change the system right now, but there's a certain level of awareness and there's a certain level of conversation that's gonna be tension feel filled and it's not gonna be easy, that needs to happen. So I think the first, you know, we're focusing on creating that conversation space first um, and having different folks at the table and then moving into action. So all in all to say, this is going to be a multi-year effort. We hope to have a pot, you know, this first round uh, of going from co-defining the issue to co-creating the solution to uh, piloting the solution for, for that to take up until next summer and have a pilot out, out the door by, by next summer. However, that's not the end of it. It's going to take a commitment on all of our parts from philanthropy to policymakers to community to sustain that effort and refine um, whatever solutions that we're testing uh, and go big and, and scale big as well. So it's a multi-year commitment, uh, at least on the part of the foundations. And that's the message that we want to communicate to everybody as well. Uh, the initial drive, I think, is the three foundations. And then it's my role to engage others uh, to keep it going because I think we all know that one group is not going to be able to do all the work and it's going to take more than just one group. So we have the foundations and then myself and then we have the community advisory team that I talked about. I talked, I said that about two thirds of the community advisory team is going to be made up of justice impacted individuals, but it's also going to include some system actors. And by that we're defining them as, you know, decision policy decision makers as well as policy implementers. So if I were to say who are your two main stakeholders that those two would be it community impact impacted community, as well as uh, policy decision makers uh, and implementers. And then in order policy can be p big P with politics and it can be small P right and forever to have for us to have um, big P uh, policy change is going to take beyond those two groups right uh, so that's you know the bigger group that we're looking at which is the greater um, Minnesota public uh, that would be our third stakeholder uh, one of the big crucial things that uh, we always like to have with women's press conversations is the action equals change component we have very engaged readers um, very mm -hmm. interested in equity what I mean, I know things are just sort of shaping up. Um, is there anything that readers can do, uh, people uh, can do now to support what you're doing? Or is it something where, you know, pay attention to listening sessions that are coming up in a few months? Or what, what do you recommend for people? I think, uh, yes, pay attention to listening sessions. Um, but I think be willing to, and you've already started this, be willing to have a different kind of conversation. Um, I talked about policy change, but being one of our goals, but so is narrative change. The con there's a conversation we need to have, and it's going to include all of us, and it's going to include all of us first learning, um, you know, the terminology, the language that's being used, the stories behind, uh, and the wisdom behind some of the communities um, identified solutions and identified problems. So pay attention to that. We're going to be sharing that, but also be willing to do your own uh, legwork and also what we're hearing, um, you know, from communities and being open with our process and being transparent with it and then uh, providing opportunities to engage as they come up.